Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the lecture number five in continuation of the photosynthesis chapter. Now, in this lecture, we are going to discuss the difference between the C3 and C4 plant leaf anatomy. When we'll understand the difference between the C3 and C4 plants anatomy, it will be easy for us to understand the C4 cycle of the plants. Now, when we discuss about the C3 and C4 plants, now first of all let's talk about why do we call them as C3 plants and C4 plants. C3 plant and C4 plants. Now, answer is very very simple. In C3 plant, if you remember the last lecture, the ribulose bisphosphate, which is actually a 5 carbon compound, when it joins with the carbon dioxide, it forms a 6 carbon compound which is unstable. And right away, this 6 carbon compound which is unstable, it breaks down into two molecules of three carbon compounds. Now the first molecule which are extractable that is a three carbon compound. Now as this is the first molecule during the chain of chemical reaction which is extractable and it is a three carbon compound that is why these plants they are called as C3 plants. The question is, what are C4 plants? In C4 plants, the first molecule which is extractable during this photosynthesis process, that is a 4 carbon compound. And as the first molecule which is extractable is a 4 carbon compound that is why these plants they are called as C4 plants. Now let's learn the difference between the anatomy of the C3 and C4 plants leaves especially. Now, for that purpose, I will draw two diagrams and those two diagrams, they will be close to each other so that we can find the differences easily. Now, on this side, I will be drawing the C3 plant and on this side, I will be drawing the C4 plant leaf structure. Now, it's obvious we already know that on the upper surface of the leaf and on the lower surface of the leaf there are there is a layer of cells and that layer of cells is called as epidermis upper and lower epidermis now in the upper epidermis there are no stomata or openings but in the lower epidermis in the both plants there are openings which through which the exchange of gases can happen so if i label it this is the upper epidermis And this one is lower epidermis. Now, in 
the lower epidermis these are stomata another thing that the upper epidermis it is covered by waxy cuticle so I am representing the waxy cuticle with the black line in both of these cases so this is waxy cuticle over here and over here then in both plants in the middle there is vascular bundle now around the vascular bundle there is a layer of cells Now this layer of cells which is around the vascular bundle that is called as bundle sheath cells. Now question is why are they called as bundle sheath cells? We'll go into that detail later. But first let's discuss or draw the xylem and phloem. Now you guys have already learned about the differences between the xylem and phloem. That the xylem they have thick walls while the phloem they have thinner walls why the xylem has thicker walls because the xylem it has extra deposition of lignin so that is why they have thicker walls and they are dead cells not only that the phloem they are actually made up of two cells each phloem cell that is companion cell and sieve element which is visible under the microscope or electron microscope so this one is xylem and this one is phloem now next thing that these cells which are surrounding the xylem and phloem these cells are called as bundle sheath cells the question is why are they called as bundle sheath cells the answer is very very simple the word bundle is this derived from xylem and phloem which are collectively called as vascular bundle and the word sheath it means covering remember that in biology wherever the word sheath will come it will mean covering so these are the cells which are covering the xylem and phloem or the vascular bundle so that is why these cells they are called as bundle sheath cells now there is other, now there is the difference between the C3 and C4 plants that there are two types of mesophyll cells in the C3 plants there are spongy mesophyll cells which make the spongy tissue and there are palisade mesophyll cells which make the palisade tissue now I'm draw, I have drawn the mesophyll cells over here. Now in C4 plants, the mesophyll cells, they are arranged around the bundle sheath cells and also they are arranged all around the leaf as well. But they are properly arranged like this in a whirl around the bundle sheet and 
they are present all around the leaf as well. So here these are mesophyll cells. So here is the anatomical difference between the C3 and C4 plants. Now the main difference comes in the arrangement of the mesophyll cells. In the C3 plants, there are two types of mesophyll cells. These ones, which are rectangular in shape, they are called as palisade mesophyll cells, while these ones, which have air spaces among them, these are called as spongy cells, and they make the spongy tissue, and these ones make the palisade tissue. But in C4 plants, the spongy cells, they are arranged in a whirl. They are arranged in a cyclic form around the bundle sheet cells and also scattered all around the leaf as well. So, I conclude my lecture of anatomy differences between the leaves of C3 and C4 plants over here. Now, just for your reminder that the simple photosynthetic reactions in C3 plants, they happen in the chloroplast or directly into the both of the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll cell. But the photosynthetic reactions, that especially the dark reaction or this, or the, this um, Calvin cycle that is divided into, this, into the bundle sheet cells and then into the mesophyll cells, which we are going to discuss in the next lecture. Thank you very much. See you in next lecture.